to another video. So tomorrow morning, I'm going diving with my friend Micah. We're going off his boat with his dad and his dad's friend. And we're gonna hit a bunch of different spots. We're gonna spot hop from place to place. You know, we're not gonna spend more than, you know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour at each zone. We're just gonna try and find some grounds, try and find some fish, and hopefully get a nice haul of reef fish. And yeah, so hopefully we'll get some action. And I know a lot of you guys in the comments have been asking me for a catch and cook. And so today, hopefully, or sorry, tomorrow, hopefully I'll get some nice fish and we can do a little catch and cook at um, my house after the dive. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can get that done for you guys because I know a lot of you have been wanting me to actually show how I cook my fish. So hopefully I can get that done for you guys. But yeah, um, that's all I got. I'll see you guys in the water. Shoot. my third or fourth drop of the day. We're cruising right now at about 45 feet and I'm taking a drop here because I've seen a nice Munu. He pops out right there. Looks like he's gonna swim away, but then he turns right back around. So I line up, take my shot, and I secure my first fish of the day. Really solid sized Munu. And there were a ton of these throughout the day and even bigger ones than this one. But first fish down. Shot him a little bit high, but good thing he didn't rip off. This is another spot we moved after I shot that Munu because there wasn't really any other fish around. And so I'm dropping down at the start of this channel right here. As you can see, there's a pile of fish and another nice Munu is hanging out with them. And he comes right in. So I just wait for him to give me a good shot. Once again, hit him a little bit high. But luckily, again, he doesn't rip off. Another big Munu. This one was bigger than the other two. He charges me as soon as I hit the bottom. Swims away a little bit, then comes right back in. Just patiently waiting for him to settle down and give me a good shot. This one was quite a bit bigger than the, the first two. And there was actually a couple other big Munus around in that hole right there. But they kind of took off after I shot this this one right here. And by the time I reloaded my gun, they were, they were gone. A nice Munu, bigger Munu. So this is the same spot, but I just went a little bit deeper. This is 67 feet right here. And I'm making my way down and on my way down, I spotted a big Uku that was cruising around the bottom here. You can see him for a moment there in the upper right. And so I start grunting and I start scratching, trying to get him to come in, dusting a little bit. And he comes right in, gives me a nice broadside shot. Man, listen to this real scream as he takes off.
Just Uku takes off running as I make my way back up to the surface. But I knew I had a good shot. I He was pretty close and I could kind of tell where my, my shot landed. And I let go of my gun here because I didn't want to peel out any more line and there wasn't too much current so I wasn't worried about the current pulling my gun away. So I go down on a recovery drop here just to untangle my line a little bit so I can pull him up to the surface. You can see he made it all the way to the other side of this big platform here. And he was trying to fit himself inside a, a little hole, a little cave. Yeah, really nice size Uku. I was super stoked. Uku are one of my favorite fish to hunt and one of my favorite fish to eat. So was beyond stoked to see this guy and for him to come up real close to me like that and give me a perfect shot. We switched spots after I got that uku. And this is a little bit deeper water than what we originally started at. We spent most of our dive in the 40 to 45 foot range. This right here I believe was 56 feet. So a little bit deeper and I saw a nice munu it starts coming in right here. So I line up, take my shot. Got another nice size Munu right here. So there was something interesting about this Munu. When I bring him up, you guys will be able to see it. But he actually had a pretty messed up tail. So I'm just pulling him up here. And as you can see, his tail is all all bust up. It's got chunks missing out of it and it's not as long as it should be. As you can see right there, it's all beat up. So if you guys know why that is, let me know down in the comments, but super confusing. So before dropping off my Munu off at the boat, I decided I would try and take another drop on this spot just because there was so much fish around and also while I was putting reloading my gun and putting the munu on my spear I saw a big uku so I figured maybe I would be able to call him in but I get down here and I see these two small kumus come in which is always a good sign of a healthy reef if you see kumus especially more than one and those two swim away, but three more come by and one of them was pretty big. So I try lining up on him, but he kind of runs away over to this hole. But he doesn't go inside, he kind of stops and he turns around. And starts coming right back to me. So I just kind of wait for him to, to 
to make his way over. And he comes right in, gives me a shot. So I take it. And secured a, a beautiful Kumu. Probably a, almost a two pounder or maybe two to, not two and a half, but probably around two pounds. So solid Kumu. And there were five Kumus at this zone right here, at this one little spot, which is a great sign of a healthy reef. So I was also stoked to get this Kumu, another beautiful fish. spotted a nice pile of fish again so I started making my way down this one was a little bit shallower 50 feet approximately and I get down to the bottom and I had been seeing a bunch of moo around and I made a couple of drops on them before this one but they weren't giving me the time of day they weren't coming very close but regardless, I'm putting my eyes down, scratching, dusting, all the usual stuff that you would do when you try and bring in Moo. But like I said, they didn't really want to play today. We weren't really coming super close. I'm just looking around here to see if maybe there's a Uku or something coming in, but no luck there either. But I saw a few nice Uhu swimming around. You can see some moo way out there in the distance, but this uhu right here was coming in real close, so I decided I'd try and take my shot with him. There's a small uhu right there. I line up on the uhu, take my shot. Secured this nice uhu, nice size uhu. We got the beautiful Uku right here. 
beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay. Definitely one of the bigger ones that I've shot inshore or near shore on Oahu, 100%. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe eight or nine pounds. I'm not gonna weigh it. We're just gonna get right to cutting it and then um, we're gonna cook it three different ways or prepare it three different ways. But uh, yeah, let's get some fillets off this guy first. Look at that. Yes, yeah, so. All right, guys, so I have three of the uku fillets right here. And so I'm gonna be preparing this fish three different ways. The first way is just gonna be super simple, sashimi. Um, uku sashimi is really good, so that's the first way that I'm gonna prepare this thing. And then the second way is gonna be uh, panko fried uh, uku nuggets, which is also really good and also super simple. And then the third way is gonna be a super simple um, searing style where just the outside is cooked and the inside is raw because like I said, uku is really good um, sashimi. So, you know, it's kind of the same thing, just the outside is cooked a little bit with some seasoning. And so, yeah, those are the three ways that I'm gonna be preparing this fish. They're all super easy and super quick. And uh, yeah, but you guys wanted to catch and cook. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the ways that I prepare my fish. So let's get into it. So for the uku nuggets, super simple. We're gonna cut some chunks about that thick. And then real easy seasoning, just salt and pepper. And then with the excess seasoning that gets on the cutting board, we're gonna roll the sides of each chunk in the seasoning to make sure the entire piece of fish is seasoned. Then we're gonna start heating up our oil while we prep the fish for frying. I like to use this macadamia nut oil right here. Coat the whole pan and then set it on medium high heat. And right here I just got some flour and some panko. Then just gonna crack a couple eggs inside a bowl. And I like to pour a little bit of water inside also to help the egg wash cling to the fish. So then we're gonna go with each chunk, we're gonna go egg wash to flour. I like to alternate hands, so I use one hand for the wet ingredients and wet hand, one hand for the dry ingredients. Then after the flour, back inside the egg wash, and then from the egg wash into the panko. method I said I was gonna do this searing kind of style but I changed my mind 
I decided to just do a simple pan fry because I didn't have the uh, seasoning that I usually use to coat the fish in um, before I sear it. So I decided to just go with this instead. Another really simple way to cook fish. I just got one of the fillets and then once again using the excess to cover the sides of the fillet. Then I season the other side and then I just coat the whole thing in flour. So it's like, you know, making uh, katsu but without a couple of the steps. And then just frying both sides for seven or eight minutes and then the thing is done. Once it comes golden brown like that, you know it's ready. Alright guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that catch and cook. I know I haven't done one, or I don't do one every single time, and I haven't done one in a little bit. But I hope you guys enjoyed that because I know a lot of you were asking for it. And um, yeah, so those are three of the most common ways that I usually prepare fish. Um, just because they're simple and they're quick and you know, with school and work and making videos, I don't have a lot of time to do very complicated recipes, which is why I don't often make catch and cooks because um, I don't want you guys to, I don't have that many recipes up my sleeve. And so I, oftentimes I'm just using the same recipes over and over again. And so it's not super interesting if I post the same recipe every time, but you know, um, I just thought I'd show that to you guys because a lot of you guys have been asking me why I haven't been making catch and cooks or why I don't make as many catch and cooks as other guys do. That's really the only reason why, it's just because a lot of times I don't have time for a very, you know, complicated or fancy recipe, and so I just do something nice and simple, like I fry it up or I make um, steam, nice short steamed fish or sashimi or whatever. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that regardless, and super action dive, super fun. Um, just constantly, you know, getting fish the entire dive, and it was relatively short too, only a half day, and um, we still managed to get a lot of fish. Micah shot that giant kumu, one of the biggest, if not the biggest kumus I've ever seen on Oahu, and that was pretty sick. I was so stoked for him on that one, because he's relatively new to diving, and to shoot something like that in, you know, within the first year or so of, of diving is pretty epic. But I also got that nice uku, which was also sick, and then we got a bunch of other goats as well. So overall, just a really fun dive, and then really delicious catch and cook afterwards. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today, and I'll see you in the next one. Shoots!